Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. essential to be understood if we really want to uh, make use of uh, the water resources available to us in a most judicious manner. First of all, we will like to, um, to look into the, the various properties of the soil which are important from the point of view of the crop production. And the first in these properties is the soil composition which has its own importance. What do you mean by the soil composition? As, as we know, the soil is made up of these various elements. The soil contains mineral particles. It can contain organic particles. <coughs> it has the pores. It can also have living material. The mineral particles Basically, they are the, the basic parent rock which has degraded over the time and it has disintegrated to uh, create these particles and that forms uh, one of the basic constant of the soil composition. Then the soil can also contain organic particles. These organic particles are the residuals of 
plants or of uh, animals at different levels of decay. And these organic particles play an important role. In uh, uh, different manners, in the sense that the composition of the soil, if the organic particles are there, it can help in the chemical uh, reactions, it can help in the storage of water. And then the pores is another important aspect of uh, soil. The pores can either be filled up by water or by the air. Now these pore spaces play a very important role in terms of providing the minerals which are dissolved in the water which is available in the pore spaces and also providing aeration to the plants through their root system. <coughs> Then the plant can also have living materials, they can be worms, they can be even the roots are also, they can be called as living material. And these living material, again they have an important role to play. So all these things put together, when you, when you look at the soil and their constituents, then you try to understand the composition in terms of their storage of water, in terms of their availability of water, because ultimately this matrix, the soil matrix is going to support the plant. So from that angle it is very desirable that we must have a proper understanding of the soil composition. At this juncture I think we should also understand that the soil composition is something which cannot be changed by the farmers, is something which cannot be altered by the farmers, is something which is a characteristic of the, the area of the land uh, in question. To have a look at the, the matrix, the soil matrix, from the point of view of the composition, here we have uh, tried to depict the soil particles, and this is the these are the pore spaces. Now the pore spaces are having a, com a combination of water and air. And one more thing that the pore space, the percentage of uh, water or air which is available in the pore space, that normally remains fixed. <coughs> if the percentage of water goes <coughs> up, it will be at the cost of the air. The air can be replaced by water. and there can be a situation where if the water is used by the, the root system, then there can be more air in the same pore space. So if one decreases, the other increases, or if the, the other one increases, the, the previous one will decrease. And the pore spaces, the, the level of pore spaces remains same. We will also look at the other properties which are important from uh, the point of view of our agricultural practices and from the point of view of storage of water. But at this juncture it is also important to understand that 
the smack checks of soil, the way the water and the air is available and the way the amount of water which can be made available to the, the, the plant root system. There are some other, other properties which influence that aspect. The water which is available inside is, is available in the form of or is being acted upon by some forces which will very shortly will come to those properties also which are influencing the availability of this water. There is another term which you will very often come across which is soil profile. What do you mean by soil profile? <coughs> if you look at any, any soil and try to dig out the soil at a particular point, maybe up to the depth of around 2 to 3 meters, you will find that in general the soil will be made up of various layers. Now these layers can also be sometime you you term them as horizons. Now these various layers have different characteristics. In general you will find that Typically these layers can be classified into these different uh, uh, layers. They can be plow layers, deep plow layer, subsoil layer and parent rock layer. Depicting that you can have a look at uh, this figure which shows these typical layers. <coughs> the top layer which basically supports the, the growth of plants, the root, root system of plants is normally supported by the plow layers. There is the layer where the extent of this layer can be around uh, 30 centimeters or so, or maybe slightly more. And most of the activity, the cultivation activity, is confined to this plow layer. And this is, in comparison to the lower layers, this is having more of organic matter. The deep plow layers as the one which is supporting the deep root systems of trees and the subsoil layer is a layer which normally doesn't support any any um, uh, root system, maybe some of the roots might be penetrating to the subsoil layers, but invariably this layer will be having uh, more of moisture availability. This will be a layer which will be saturated layer. And then this follows the parent rock layer, which is having the lowest level of the soil or the organic matter also won't be available in this layer. And that is a layer which is representing the parent rock from where the top layers have been uh, formulated over the period of time. 
So when we talk of the soil profile, is is very desirable to know how the profile is, what are the characteristics of the profile, how the profile varies from the top layer to the the parent rock layers, because these layers are going to influence the availability of the moisture as well as the flow of the water which is either being made available through the natural rainfall or through the artificial irrigation. influences the, the moisture availability or the moisture movement is the soil texture. We all know that uh, there are mineral soil particles which formulate the soil. But these particles can be subdivided into different classes with respect to their sizes. There are many different classifications of soil which are available in literature and in some cases even these ranges, there can be some variation in the, the sizes which are uh, presented here. But in general, they don't vary much. For example, the gravel is one of the mineral soil particles. If the size of that particle is more than one millimeter, it is coming to the, the class of gravel. The sand varies from 1 to 0.5 millimeter size particles. If the particle size is between 0.5 to 0.002 millimeters, then is termed as silt. And anything below 0.002 millimeters is clay. Now when we look at the soil, the soil will be having these proportions of the different soil particles and the, the proportion can vary. Now with the variation of those proportions, the characteristics of the soil in terms of the moisture availability and the moisture flow, they are going to be influenced. So it is important to know those characteristics and it is important to know those classifications which have been put for, uh, forward in literature and we can uh, later on use those properties in terms of knowing our soils better. So with that intention, the soil texture is having its own importance and uh, let me Give you at least uh, the one textural uh, classification which is given by U.S. Department of Agriculture. respect to this classification. Clay is up to 0 0.002 
anything less than 0.002 millimeters as Tom does clay. The silt as 0.05 and less or between 0.002 and 0.05 and the gravel as I have just mentioned as anything greater than 2.0 millimeters. As far as the sand is concerned, it is subclassified into five different varieties. Very fine sand, fine sand, medium sand, coarse sand and very coarse sand. <coughs> and their sizes vary. And this manner. So this is one typical textural classification. However, another classification, if I extend the same thing, Atobog gave another classification which had the same size as far as clay is concerned, it had the same size as far as gravel is concerned, but gave a different size for salt silt as per his classification was only between 0.002 to 0.02 and the sand he only subdivided into two subcomponents fine sand and coarse sand. And the demarcation between fine sand and coarse sand was the size of 0.2 millimeters. Now this is more simple a classification. And there are many more, com more complicated classifications Later on, the U.S. Department of Agriculture came out with a more uh, um, you can say uh, a much more diversified classification, which had the soil classes divided into twelve different subgroups. Now, it is a a function of how refined your uh, study is going to be how many, what are the various uh, parameters which you are going to consider, how much variation of various properties you are going to expect and what is their importance. You can go in for a very complicated uh, classification provided you have sufficient data. But in general, most of the time you will find that broad classifications which are uh, just sufficient to give you reasonably good information on the changing of uh, or the change of basic properties of soil from uh, the point of view of their absorption of soil moisture and the release of the soil moisture or the way they let the soil uh, let the moisture flow out of the, their uh, structure 
that is what is going to be important so from that angle even if you know the the classifications or you consider them in the most general manner which are uh, reasonably sufficient to take care of your uh, your interests these three textual uh, classifications are quite sufficient and these are coarse textured soils medium textured soils and fine textured soils these soils from these three classifications there are different names given the coarse textured soils are the ones which are predominantly um, having uh, more <coughs> sand components so they are sand predominant soils they are also sometimes termed as sandy or light soils the medium textured soils are more silt predominant and they can be also termed as the loamy or medium soils and fine textured soils are clear predominant and they are also termed as clay or heavy soils <coughs> in general uh, at this juncture we can in general say that some of the properties from the angle of our agricultural activities the coarse texture soils are the ones which let the water move through them at a very fast rate Comparison to the fine textured soils, where the rate of movement will be very slow. If you just uh, try to look at the, a typical situation here, you have. two soils let me say that this is a loamy soil and as sandy loam to be precise in comparison we have another soil which is again a loamy soil but is clay loam now if you try to make the water available at top the way the water will move it'll have 
a movement of waters in the sandy loam in a manner which is much faster. Let me say this is 15 minutes. This is after 40 minutes. Maybe this is after one hour. And in comparison, in the clay loam soil, you will have a spread which is much slower in the downward direction. Maybe this will, for the soil to reach, for the water to reach uh, this place, it might take around four hours and for, for the water to penetrate up to this depth it might take much more uh, time up to maybe up to around 24 hours. So that is the level of difference between the two. Though the spread will be much better in the case of uh, clay soil which is having clay predominance in comparison to the sandy loam, but the sandy loam will have more movement in the vertical direction. Then soil structure is another aspect of soil which gives us more insight into the <coughs> another property of soil which deals with the, the movement of moisture through the soil. But first of all, it is important to know what is, what do you mean by soil structure? Is the, the soil structure refers to the arrangement of soil particles. We have talked about the different soil particles, how those soil particles are arranged and they make a compound of the soil. That is what is known as the soil structures. So if you look at a group of soil particles, you can call it a soil aggregate and the soil will be composed of many of such aggregates and these aggregates, their position in the soil, how they are, how they are structured, how they are placed, that is what is going to decide <coughs> the soil structure. Okay? Now the soil structure is something which can be altered. Earlier we had uh, said that the soil, the, the, the soil uh, constants, they cannot be altered, whereas the soil structure, because soil structure is something which is the which is the structuring of the soil, which is the placement of the soil particles or the aggregates and that can be altered through the farming activities. So the farmer can afford to alter these the structures of the soil <coughs> and he can, he can try to get that structure which is more beneficial for his agricultural activities. What are the various arrangements? What are the various uh, arrangements of aggregates which are normally found in the soils? And these are granular structure, the blocky structure, or the blocky arrangement of aggregates, 
plasmatic and massive. These arrangements, they influence the movement of the moisture. For example, in the case of granular structure, you will find that the moisture will be moving at a very rapid rate. On the, on the contrary, if the structure is massive, then the rate will be very slow. Now, between the two structures, in one case, the placement of the, the particles will be such, the placement of the aggregates will be such that there are more pore spaces. The pore spaces are allowing the water to move uh, through their uh, spaces, whereas in the case of a massive, st massive structure, the placement is such that uh, the pores are not in a position to let the moisture move out of its structure. Whereas the other two structures, the blocky and the prismatic, they have a moderate rate of flow through them and this also the, the structure from this angle it makes a lot of difference in terms of the the movement of the moisture and uh, even um, the other agricultural activities for example if the structure is such that it has the, the pore spaces connected to the, the moisture available in the soil at some lower depths, that can enhance the evaporation activity from the soil. So to break those capillaries, to break the, those connecting pores, you can change, the, you can alter the structure. You can do some tilling operations <coughs> and that can reduce the, the loss of moisture through the evaporation. So if one has the understanding, if the farmer knows about what are the various properties and how they are active in there, uh, what, how they are influencing the different processes of the moisture storage or moisture movement then he can take the appropriate steps to ensure that the, those actions can be taken which are more beneficial, which are more judicious from the, the water management point of view. Next we will talk in terms of infiltration. First of all, what do we understand by the infiltration process? The infiltration is the process of the water entering into the soil. So it's the process of the moisture entry into the soil and its subsequent movement into the soil of this water which has entered into the soil is known as percolation. That is how these two processes are uh, different from each other. But infiltration process is more important because if we understand this process in a proper perspective, we can 
ensure a proper storage of moisture into the soil because if the water cannot enter the soil it cannot be stored into the soil there might be a situation where you have applied the water onto the surface of the the field and most of it has run off the field it has not been able to penetrate into the soil and that is where the infiltration process has having its importance we must understand what are the various factors which govern this process of infiltration or which influence this process of infiltration Infiltration rate Now Before I go further I think I must try to uh, tell you that infiltration can be expressed in many ways it can be expressed in terms of rate in which case its units are depth per unit time it can be just expressed in the form of depth <coughs> in which case is a cumulative depth and that again has uh, it is with respect to a time that over that depth over how much time so in that case you are not looking at the variation of this infiltration in time you are only interested in the final outcome which is only the cumulative depth that over the last so many uh, hours how much of the depth you could accumulate into the soil that is what will be the infiltration depth when you talk of infiltration rate the rate is something which is dependent on many factors and the major factors which influence the infiltration rate are soil texture soil moisture content and soil structure I think we'll stop here. Hello.